missing today? That's you guys. Say hello. Hi. Yeah, they're kind of happy you're going. That's what they're saying. They're making faces at you right now. Okay, so looking at the notes, the acid base color sheet, this is really handy. It gives you a lot of basic information, no pun intended, about acids and bases. So again, Arrhenius came up with a simplified definition, and then you had to pick up a better definition, and that's where Bronsted-Lowry definition comes in. So we have bases, acceptors, acids, donors. Tristan, are you with us on the planet today? Yes. Put that phone away. Turn it over face down. Mm -hmm. Turn that phone down. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So if you notice down here on the bottom, again, we talked about conjugate acids and conjugate bases. Again, you wrote this down, but if you look on either end, it talks about the conjugate acid and base on either end down here. So this end has, talks about the acid, this end talks about the base. But if you look right down here, the weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base. That's going to be really important for determining what, uh, when, you put two, when you put an acid and a base together, what is your final solution? What's the pH of your final solution going to be? That's going to be important for that. Okay, flip to the next page <coughs> in your packet. And this one now is a little bit beyond what we did. We did this in pre-AP, only it was, it was uh, we didn't, you didn't have it, all the Ks all over the place. So we have a water constant. So we talked about KSP and KEQ. Here is another one. This is still KEQ. This is still talking about equilibrium, right? And again, when you think water, you've got an H and you have an OH. So there's going to be a balance between those. So H plus OH minus. There's always going to be a water balance here in this. If we have water, a neutral solution, then these two concentrations will be equal. Yes? If we have that, those two concentrations are going to be equal. And so this is what it's talking about. Water self-ionizes, which is weird, to a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, water splits into ions. To what amount does it? It's, it does that to um, 1 times 10 to the negative 7. So at any one time, 1 times 10 to the negative 7, so 0 0.000007 moles per liter of the water molecules will be split into ions. So a very stinking small amount. But enough that we can base the whole pH system on this. Now with water, if you have 0 .000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 000, 7 molar of the seven moles of the water that's going to be ionized, then that's the, in, like with the hydrogen ions, and the same thing is going to be for the hydroxide ions. So it's a constant. When you add these, when you multiply these two together, you're going to get the water constant. So when you have distilled water, Kw for distilled water at 25 degrees Celsius is one times ten to the negative 14, and that's what we base our whole pH scale on. One times ten to the negative 14. If you go down on the acid end of the scale, you have lots and lots of hydrogen ions, very few hydroxide ions. So the concentration of the hydrogen ions increases and the hydroxide ion concentration decreases it as you're down here on this end of the scale. As you go to the opposite end, it just does, obviously it does just the opposite. So the concentration of hydroxide ions is huge, the concentration of hydrogen ions is low. So there's always going to be a balance. When you multiply the hydrogen ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration together, it will always equal one times 10 to the negative 14. Yes? So whatever acid-base system you're working with, when you add those two together, they should equal one times 10. When you multiply those two together, they should equal one times 10 to the negative 14. Grab your green pages, please. Yellow pages, green pages. I don't know what color they are anymore. I'm going to make them all the same color next year if I teach AP chemistry. <coughs> Maybe we'll have someone with a master's in chemistry teaching it, which would be really cool. That the woman, Suja, Ms. Suja, who keeps coming in. I told you that, right? Masters in chemistry. Why Frank Phillips didn't grab her up? I don't know. That's craziness. So she okay. Has, she's she already has it. Oh, she, already she already has it, and she wants to teach. So she's going through the program for people who already have their degree. There's a program you can go and get your teaching degree. And so she's going through that program. All right, so in this section, again, it's equilibrium. We already did the first two, KC and KP. So we've got those. All these other ones are dealing with acids and bases. So if you look right here, KW, this is what we're looking at. 
Kw, the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration, will always equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So look at this. Ka times Kb is equal to this 1 times 10 to the negative 14. So always, if you multiply these two together, that's what you're going to get. <clears throat> Someone said, holy crap, I don't like writing out all that 1 times 10 to the negative 14, 1 times 10 to the blah, 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 blah. And so someone said, fine, let's just take the negative log. So if you take the negative log of 1 times 10 to the negative 14, what do you get? Negative log 1 second e e negative 14. And what do you get? Negative log 1 times 10 to the negative 14. You get 14. That's exactly what that is. So when you have this negative log of this number, whoever came up with this, got, I can't remember who did it, but whoever did it said, let's just cut all right in this 1 times 10 to the negative whatever, and let's just say it's 14. There's my pH. I'm going to call it the pH. That's it. There are no deep, dark secrets to that. They were just tired of writing that crap out, which God bless them because I get tired of writing that crap out too. So they just looked at that and said, let's just take the negative log. So all this ugliness here is only because they didn't want to write out the 1 times 10 to the negative 13, 1 times 10 to the negative whatever. You can even type in 1 times 10 to the negative 1.2. Negative log, 1 second, oh, hang on, i got to put that in right. Negative log. 1 second EE, e, negative 1.2. <clears throat> and it won't work for you, will it? You can't have decimals up in there. Yeah? You can't have the decimals up in there. So you have to pay attention to that. All right. So <clears throat> we've got a couple more equations that we'll talk about in just a little while. But those are the big dose. The, the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration or the hydroxide ion concentration is really what we're going to look at. All right. So we have the same thing. The entire pH system is based on the Kw of water. So again, the Kw of water, 1 times 10 to the negative 14, and that's equal to Ka times Kb. So always within your system, if you have Ka and you multiply it to Kb, it should equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14. That's a way to check yourself in this. Remember that pH stands for the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration, and there are different ways of calculating or finding the, the concentrations that we deal with. So, and my colors went out in here. There should be, this should say to the negative 14. Write this in because the I highlighted it apparently with a poor color. So this is negative 14, this is negative 7, and this is negative 7. So if you take the negative log of that, it's 14. If you take the negative log of this, it's 7. If you take the negative log of this, it's 7. Remember that when you multiply numbers with the exponents, don't you add the exponents? So it's the 7 plus the 7. So here, when we look at this, when you have a pH and you calculate the pH as 4, then when you add that, when you want to calculate the pOH, all you have to do is subtract it from 14. Because always, where's my number here? Always, where did I just write that down? Oh, always right here. This is pH and this would be pOH. So when you do these together, when you focus on the pH plus the pOH, the hydrogen ion concentration plus the hydroxide ion concentration, they're always going to equal 14. That's if you're taking the negative logs of that, right? If you have it in this form. If you don't have it in that form, then when you add the, P, when you add the hydrogen ion concentration to the hydroxide ion concentration, they will always equal 1 times 10 to the negative 14. That's that constant. Okay? Um, and let me see what I have in here because I can't read it. Can you guys read what it says in the highlighted system? Yeah, I can. Uh, 14 is pH plus pOH, or you can use it for any acid-base system. Yeah? Okay, this one, we're going to hold this for a little bit later when we talk about pKa and pKb. But you do need to remember when you have that little lowercase p right there, it always means you're going to take the negative log. Like pH, that lowercase p with a capital H, that lowercase p means you're going to take the negative log down here. So when you have this little piece, just like you have on your green pages, pKa, look at this. It says it right here. It's the negative log of the Ka. So that little p in front of it means, hey, take the leg negative log of that stuff. Okay, and then on page 
10, again, you have a list of strong acids and strong bases. You need to stick those in your brain. Unfortunately, you're just going to have to know that stuff. Strong acids, strong bases. Make yourself a note. Go grab a, a post-it note. Stick it on here. Something so it stands out. Hold it down. Make a little accordion with it. Do something so you remember you need to stick these things in your brain. Some of them are easy because some of the most common acids that we use are going to be the ones that are there. Hydrochloric, sulfuric, we use those. Nitric, those three big dogs are the ones we use a lot. They, of course, like to put some of the small ones that we don't use as much. Um, I can guarantee you that they're going to use ammonia, which is a weak base, and they're going to use acetic acid, which is a weak acid. They use that all over the place. They also like to throw in this one, some of the, the chloric acids, the ones with the CLOs, some form of CLO. So I don't know why they like to, but they do like to use that. Okay, book page 13. <clears throat> First thing I want you to do is write the products on these. So on page 13, if we have HCl and NaOH, we know it's going to be a double replacement reaction. So the first two pieces are going to swap places. Well, I know the oxidation numbers for each of these. H is plus 1, Cl is minus 1, sodium is plus 1, hydroxide ions minus 1. Everything's 1, so I can just swap these. So on the other side over here, I have NaCl and HOH or water. When you have an acid-base reaction, one of the products will always be water. Always. H2SO4, everything's not 1 anymore. So when I look at this, I have... Hydrogen is plus 1, the sulfate ion is minus 2, potassium is plus 1, the hydroxide ion is minus 1. I know my first two pieces are going to swap places, so one of my products is always water. This H is going to hook up with this OH, and then the K is going to hook up with the SO4. What's the formula? K and SO4. Mm -hmm. K2SO4, the K is plus 1, SO4 is minus 2. Again, if, it's, if you're kind of rusty with that, that's something that you can just write over to the side. Anytime you write stuff down, if you need to write it down, you probably won't do that a lot, but take the time to do it until your brain kicks back into gear on just writing those formulas. I noticed on one of the last couple of tests, a couple of you guys had struggled with writing some formulas, so make sure you do this step because every single one of you guys excelled when you were writing the formulas in pre-AP. You know, oh, look, it's the crisscross method. So you know you can do that. It's just a matter of taking that little step to do that until your brain kicks it in. Okay, HCl and so we have hydrochloric acid and magnesium hydroxide. What are your two products? MgCl2 plus water. Again, I like writing as, as HOH when I'm doing the, the acid-based stuff simply because it points out to me, look, there's the hydrogen ion, there's the hydroxide ion. That's all the peach, that's all the acids and bases are about. <clears throat> this one, they're usually going to write it CH3COOH because they're obnoxious. This is the organic way of writing that acid, vinegar. <clears throat> this is the inorganic way of writing it. I like the inorganic way because the hydrogen's right there in front. Hydrogen is plus one, the acetate ion's minus one, sodium is plus one, hydroxide is minus one. What's the formula on the other side? <clears throat> so no, don't jump all at once and tell me what it is. Uh huh. Or yeah, and water. Here's the other way they could write this. If they have it, and they will, I guarantee you, you're going to have it written on the AP test. It's this hydrogen that's taken off. So the sodium is stuck down on the end. So it could be CH three. C-O-O-N-A. But a lot of times they're writing it as a net ionic equation, so it'll be CH3COO with a negative sign. Yeah? So here we're not writing it as net ionic equations, so we're just writing the full thing out here so you can see. Remember, just, just do this. Now here's the kicker on this one. Remember this is the only positive polyatomic ion that you guys had to worry about? So don't forget about that. So what are my what are my substances over here? What are my products? Water and it's like ammonia. Uh-huh. Ammonium. 
ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate there, yeah? So it's just a matter of remembering when you have acid-base reactions, every single one of them are going to produce water. Okay, the next thing you're going to have to do, always, 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 is you're going to have to write those net ionic equations. So look at how these things split into ions. So if we look at this, hydrochloric acid is going to split into the hydrogen ion and the chloride ion. All of these would be aqueous because we're talking about this in the term of, of an acid. So all of these would be aqueous. So it's hydrochloric acid aqueous, hydrogen ion aqueous, chloride ion aqueous. <coughs> sodium hydroxide, we have the sodium ion and the hydroxide ion. <coughs> what about number three? Do numbers three and four. So you have one calcium ion and how many hydroxide ions? And on the last one, you have the one hydrogen ion and the one acetate ion. Or if they write it like this, CH3COOH. Do you see that these are the same? Yeah. yeah? Okay. If they write it like this, then when they split into ions, it'll be CH3COO plus the H ion. That's what it'll look like. So that's doing this the organic chemistry way. And on the bottom, see if you can figure out which is which. So, did you get them all? Which ones are you stuck on? Mm -hmm. Sodium hydroxide. Drain cleaner, sodium hydroxide. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Drain cleaner. Is there lye on here? Yeah. Hang on. Where's lye? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, no, lye is, lye is sodium hydroxide drain cleaner. Sulfuric acid. Yeah, when you guys, you don't mess with car batteries, correct? 
ever. That is concentrated, very strong hydro, uh, sulfuric acid. So it's really bad, really nasty stuff. I see it in your eyes that you want to play with it. No. <laughs> Anything else? No? Flip the page. This is page, uh, what page is this? 14? 14. You can do the top one on your own, splitting it into whether, getting the name and whether or not it's a, a acid, base, or salt. But let me point out the salts on here. You know, inorganically, if it, if it begins with H, it's going to be an acid, right? So you can peg the acids really quickly. If it's organically written, the hydrogen is usually stuck on the end. So instead of this end, that's not an organic acid, but here, instead of this one, it's stuck on the other end. It'll be, it'll have a hydrogen dangling off the end. Yeah? Um, if it's a salt, then it's not going to have the acid, and it's not going to have the hydrogen, it's not going to have the obvious hydroxide. So if we look at this, look at this third one, okay? You don't see the hydrogen, you don't see the hydroxide. You should first instinctively, instinctively want to call it a salt. It's... Okay, the technical term for a salt is it's the anion from a base. Did I just say that right? It's the anion from an acid and the cation from a base. So this would have come from the acid. This part would have come from the base. So KOH plus HBr would have produced water and KBr. So a salt is what comes from that. So when we did these equations over here, you know the first one automatically, oh, that's salt, we call it salt, salt and water. Every single one of these things that was produced is a salt. It produces a salt and water, some kind of salt and water, some kind of salt and water. So when we talk about a salt, it has one part from the acid and one part from the base. So that's what it is. What you have to be careful for in pegging that is when you come down here and you see another one, look at this guy right here. This guy's not a salt. This guy is actually a base. Lithium carbonate, is ten, it tends, when you put it in water, it's going to form hydroxide ions because it's going to split and it's going to pick up the, some things are going to be more soluble than others and it's going to release hydroxide ions into it. So when you see those carbonates, you know that that's going to be another form that's something that's basic. Lithium carbonate, magnesium carbonate, calcium carbonate, chalk is a base. So would uh, H4O H be a salt? Where is this one? NH4, this is a base. It's got the hydroxide on. Oh, number, I'm sorry, number six? Yeah. That's a base. If it's got the hydroxide stuck on the end, it's typically a base. So what comes that salt stuff? Um, KBR. Uh, you could make an argument for number eight being a salt, but in reality, when we look at that carbonate, it's, it's going to be basic in there. And there's a roundabout way to explain it. We'll talk about that a little bit later when we compare, when we put those weak salts, and, uh, weak acids, and weak bases together. But typically, that that true definition for a salt is it has one part from an acid. It's the anion, the negative ion from an acid, and the cation, the positive ion from a base. Okay, so think about that again. So. This that makes it an acid is positive, so the thing that gonna, it's going to give away is going to be the negative ion. This piece that makes it a base is negative, so the thing it's going to give to make a salt is going to be the other part to it, that positive. So it, they each give a part to make a salt. And then they make water also when you put the acid and base together. In the middle section down here, it's M1V1 equals M2V2, only you can also, if you think about it this way, it's not just a matter of doing concentrations. This particular section is just diluting an acid or diluting a base. But you can also do a titration where you are chemically combining acids and bases. And so you could have Ma, the, the molarity of the acid, times the volume of the acid, equals the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. So we can use this thing in more than one way. 
So for this, these three questions here, it's just saying, hey, we're going to dilute this acid. And we, I do this all the time. I have, uh, when, you, when you buy acid, I buy a big jug, a gallon bottle of, a, or a two liter bottle of, um, of uh, really concentrated hydrochloric acid because it's less expensive that way. And then from that, I can make all the different molarities of acids that we use. And so it makes sense to use this. So if we have to have a 50 mil sample of 6 molar HCl, I'm going to say this is my 1. So my molarity is 6 molar. My volume is 50 mils. I could change that to liters, but my mils are going to cancel out, so that just saves me a step by not doing that. It, what's the new concentration if I dilute it? So my new amount that I have, I'm going to have some unknown molarity, and I'm going to have 250 mils of it. So we can find out the molarity. I am watering this stuff down. So I should get a lower number than 6. Pop that into your calculator. And what'd you get? So we dropped it down to 1.2 molar. So my new molarity is 1.2. So in the lab, what I do is <clears throat> I usually have the molarity. Obviously, it's written on the bottle. And I know what molarity I want. So in this case, what I would have had is I've got, let's say I've got 6 molar. And I want 0.1 molar. And I need, I need um, 500 mils of it. I need 500 mils. How much of this 6 molar stuff do I have to use? Pop that into your calculator. This is what I actually do. Every time I have to make some acid, this is what I actually do. I've got 6 molar, but I want this. How much of the 6 molar am I going to have to use? What'd you get? 8.3? So what that means is I'm going to get a 500 mil volumetric flask. I'm going to measure out 8.3 mils of this nasty hydrochloric acid, and then I'm going to fill the volumetric flask up to the 500 mil mark. You know, that's the one that's used a lot. So this this process, like, hey, I've got to I've got to figure out how much of this concentrates. So usually, what I use, what I have in there, is like 12.6 molar. It's really bad. You don't take the lid off unless it's in the fume hood. It's so bad. <clears throat> But um, so that's what we use from here. So it's usually a really tiny amount. I usually get the pipettes out and get a pipetter, and I, I might have to pick up, you know, like 4.1 moles or something like, or 4.1 mils or something like that, and that's what I use. So that's reality. That's what I use a lot. The other thing that we use this for, again, is in titration. And this will be not just diluting. This will be where we have a reaction of the molarity of the acid times the volume of the acid is going to equal the molarity of the base times the volume of the base. And I'm going to have these things. What I might have to incorporate is if it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, like HCl to NaOH, then I'm good with this. If I use H2SO4 and NaOH, then I'm going to have a problem because I'm going to use up two of the hydrogen ions for every one of those moles of other things, right? I'm going to give, if I want to say it that way, I'm going to give two hydrogen ions for every one of the no, sodiums. So we might have to modify this where you put N on one side or the other. N is in number of moles. So you can put N on one side or the other if that's the case of it. So this one might have one moles. So it puts one mole of hydroxide ions in here. This one puts two moles of, of hydrogen ions into the solution for everything. So you just have to kind of modify Just watch your mole ratio in there. <coughs> um, drop down here to the bottom. Acid, base, or both? Which one tastes bitter? Base. Bases taste bitter. Um, which ones split into ions, or which ones can run electricity through them? Both. Both. I'm going to put AB for that. They both do. Some better than others. If it's a weak acid or a weak base, it's a, it's a weak conductor of electricity. If it's a strong acid or a strong base, it's a strong conductor of electricity. That's where those words strong and weak come from. It's how good they are at conducting electricity. Which one increases the hydroxide ion concentration? Base? 
Which one turns the cabbage pink? I think it's the acid, yeah. Which one neutralizes sodium hydroxide? The acid does. Um, which one increases the hydrogen ion concentration? Acid. <clears throat> which tastes sour? Acid, definitely. Most of the foods we eat are slightly acidic, too. Which one neutralizes hydrochloric acid? Which one feels slippery, slimy, like soap? The base? Yeah. Think bleach. Yeah? Um, and there's another example of a base that doesn't have hydroxide in it. The formula for bleach is, I think, something like NaOCl. There's no hydroxide ion in there, and yet it's definitely a base. If you Did you guys test? Uh, no, because you weren't here. One of the labs we did when you weren't here is that I had a lot of different chemicals, and you had to test the pHs of them. One of them was bleach, and it's strongly basic. Yeah. Okay, which one decreases, causes the hydroxide ion concentration to decrease? The acid does. Um, which one turns the cabbage blue or green? I think it's the base, yeah. Okay, which one donates protons? Acid. Bases accept, acids donates. It's bad. <clears throat> Decreases the hydrogen ion concentration? Base. It causes the hydrogen ion concentration to decrease. Which one's corrosive? Acid. Um, that doesn't mean that the bases can't eat away at stuff. Usually corrosive, we refer typically to metals. Corrosive to metals in most cases, and the acid eats away at metals. Which one accepts the protons? Bases, acceptors, acids, donors. <clears throat> okay, now here we have this. Get a pen, you guys working with pencil? Okay, so here's the good thing on this, and this one works really beautifully. If I look at my equation... Remember that pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. pOH is the negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. And if I add these two together, the pH and the pOH, they're going to equal 14. Those are the two we're looking at. So pH equals the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. pOH, negative log of the hydroxide ion concentration. I'm sorry, I can't turn the heat up for you. And if I add pH plus pOH, they're going to equal 14. Those are the things that you really are using. So look at this. If, 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 and only if, it's in the format of 1 times 10 to the negative whatever, here's my, here's my pH right here. So the pH is 5. And then if I have pH and pOH, what must they add up to? The pH and the pOH add up to 14. So what's this number have to be? 5 plus what? 9. That's how you get the pOH. So the pH, which is what we're familiar with, is 5. The pOH, which is a system we hardly ever use, right? Nobody out in the public uses that. The pOH is 9. This number right here, okay, are you listening? This number is not on our pH scale. This number's not on the pH scale. The only numbers that are on the pH scale that we work with are here. Okay, take a break, please. <laughs>